Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, what I'm going to do today is talk about the differences between moving magnet and moving coil cartridges. Uh, I guess I, get, I do get asked about this a lot. I mean, it's not just sound quality, it's about compatibility with things, the pros and cons of the two, even the, sort of the construction of them, why, you know, why, the, why one is more expensive than the other. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting subject, really. I mean, obviously, there's not just moving magnet, moving coil, there's also moving iron and there's the old ceramic what cartridges and there's this crazy system that Decker used to use which uh, all the sort of on the uh, on the periphery really but the, the main ones really are the magnet and coil probably magnet is by far the most popular because of various reasons we'll go into um, but it just thought it'd be interesting just to look at the differences between because not every, I don't think everybody quite understands what's going on internally with with these two designs Interestingly, both designs use exactly the same componentry inside. Um, so there's no magic going on there. There's no special things internally on moving coal to make it better. What I'll do, I've, I've done diagrams. Um, I'll show you my really ropey diagrams in a minute and just show you what the differences are. Um, but I've got to say, I mean, cartridges, I mean, I've just got an old Elite 800 here, just to, as a, a little example of. Old moving magnet there, I mean, it's about 40 years old, that, but um, how on earth? Does the little bit of metal at the end of there, following your groove on your record, produce a crystal clear, believable sound? And not only that, from one stylus produces two lots of output. It's astonishing, isn't it, really? When you think about it, it it's completely ridiculous that it even works. But it does. Um, and thank yeah, thankfully it does anyway. Um, but anyway, let's go back to the <laughs> diagram time. Right, just to try and explain the two the two systems. Uh, it's very simple actually and the, the the names are a bit of a giveaway really. So anyway looking at the, my very like I say very ropey diagram here of the side view of a cartridge. Um, so whole cartridge from the side that's where your bolts go, little tags will be out the back, I should have drawn them on, to wire it into the tone arm. This is your cantilever so this bit is your cantilever with a diamond tip on the end. Now this is a moving magnet. On, the, on a moving magnet the magnets are actually attached to the cantilever and move with it. And behind that, these little straight lines are your coils, which are fixed to the body of the cartridge. So when the cantilever moves, it moves the magnets, which creates a voltage across with, with the coils and that then outputs through the back of the, into the toe and arm and onto your, your amplifier. Um, moving coil, I you can probably know where we're going now. Moving coil is the opposite of that, same components, but on the cantilever, we've got the coils attached to the cantilever that move with the cantilever, so moving coil, uh, and a fixed magnet. Um, the, slight, the slightly awkward part about this, and there, there, are, there are many awkward parts really, I suppose, but the main awkward part with that is, is it means that the, the wiring is actually then, the wiring comes from the coil to the back of the cartridge. If it's on the cantilever, that means that the cantilever is actually effectively wired in. Big drawback with that is you can't change the stylus. Unlike moving, obviously moving magnet, we've got the, our old friend, the little elite here. Um, the, the red carrier on the front is the carrier for the stylus on this. And because the cantilever and the magnets are attached and not physically wired in, you can pull them out. You can separate the two halves. By, if you sna snap your stylus, you, you buy another one, plug it in. Um, also, some manufacturers actually have uh, so say a model with, which will have three or four different style I that you can put in Audio Technica with the VM95s. There's five different models fit the same body. Autophon, the two M's. It's a bit complicated, but some of them are, some of them can be alternated, others can't. But anyway, but yeah, it gives you it gives you a whole world of up, up, a bit of upgradability and easy to fix. Um, you can change the stylus without recalibrating the tone arm. Moving coil, you can't do that because if you take the stylus out on a moving coil, it's broken because you'll rip all the wiring out. So manufacturers kind of get round that by offering sort of trading service. A trading service, they'll take your coil back off you and give you a new one at a reduced rate, assuming it's still in production. I think is usually the thing with that. These things do run out. Um, I mean, Autophon used to do like for likes and Universal exchanges and things like that. There was ways and means with it really, but Autophon constantly changed the goalposts on that, so you, I can never quite keep up with it. So the big question with moving coil is, why go to all that effort? Why put the coil on the cantilever like that? When it's so much more difficult to do, uh, the alignment is an issue, the 
the fact it's wired in is an issue because you're, you're wiring to a moving part. So you've got to think about reliability. You've got to engine in, engineer in reliability. Uh, why do that? Um, it's all to do with mass. Simply that, it's to do with mass. Because the coils are so much lighter in weight than a magnet is, um, it just takes away a, a big chunk of, of weight, really. And it's a bit like... And you think, well, so what? But it's a bit like uh, sports cars and racing cars, whatever. It's the unsprung mass. You try and reduce unsprung mass. Uh, so lightweight wheels on a, on a sports car make it handle better. Um, and it's the same with... Because basically a cartridge is trying to track a terrain in the same way as a, a sports car is. So unsprung mass, yeah. It's, it, it, it helps tracking. It helps frequency response. Um, the attack and all this sort of thing is improved. It also means that they can use much more sort of high grade materials so you, you find up at the top end you'll have solid solid um, diamond cantilevers solid sapphire cantilevers um, all sorts of crazy stuff like you know just rare metals being used which will be totally lost on moving magnet really because that extra mass just me makes it worthless really so that's that's the reasoning for it that's that's what's going on it's it's to do it is to do with mass it's to do with very things like that. The, the, another drawback which I didn't mention is because the coils, they tend to go lightweight on coils as well, so they, they'll have the bare essentials on there. Um, they tend to be a lot lower output as well, so you also need a different phono stage. You need an MC phono stage because there's much, much lower output, even the magnet. I mean, magnet is much lower output than, than line level because it's a mechanical device. It only produces so much output and coil is one step quieter again. I mean, you can get high output moving coils, but what they do is just wind on the coils more. So you're kind of gaining mass, so it's a, it's a bad thing, really. I mean, some of them are quite good, but generally high, mass, high output moving coils don't, don't really give you much benefit over a magnet, really. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that. That's that. Um, the next part of this is kind of a compatibility, and it, this, is, this is a tricky one, because a lot of people think you can always just... The cartridge is the most important part, slap it on the deck, it'll sound brilliant. But that's not the case. The cartridge is very much dependent on the platform it's mounted to, uh, to do its best, really. A bit like speakers are very reliant on the amplifier that drives them. You never get 100% out of a, a speaker because it can always be driven better. And a cartridge is the same. It needs a very rigid platform. It needs to not allow resonance to go into the tone arm and then rattle around and come back into the cartridge to be reamplified. It needs to be nice and dead and rigid and a firm base for the cartridge so that you get the full performance out of it. Um, and the problem with moving coil is it is, very, it is actually quite energy rich. It does kick a lot of energy out because of the way it's constructed and the way you know it performs. It creates more energy so there's more to control so you can't just stick one in a cheaper deck because really the benefits won't be there if the tone arm can't handle it then it'll sound if you look it'll sound as good as a moving magnet but possibly not even as good as that so you have to have the right equipment in place to justify it um, and you wouldn't really put a, a coil into a, a Riga Planer 3 particularly you need to go further up the range than that to get the benefits of it so it's one of those things. I mean, if you, if you have any questions on this, just ring me at the shop and I'll, you know, if you want to know what level you can go to with your deck, just give me a call. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I hope this has been, been useful. Any questions, like I say, just give me an email or give me a ring at the shop. Thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to give us a subscribe and a like, like and I will soon be doing the Cozy Chat video as well. So that, that's coming up soon. Um, probably next week now, but soon. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.